Hi, I'm uh, Debbie Bame Davis, um, and I am currently the Associate Dean in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences here at George Mason University. Um, I am one of the two founding members of the Arch Lab. Uh, the Arch Lab was founded in 1996 uh, when Wayne Gray joined the university. He and I decided to throw our forces together and merge his cat lab with my less colorfully named Human Factors Lab. <laughs> and uh, ever since then, we have had a merged lab for all the faculty who are in the Human Factors and Applied Cognitive Program at George Mason. Hello, uh, I'm Raja Parasaraman. I'm professor of psychology at George Mason University. I'm also director of the PhD program in Human Factors and Applied Cognition. So we have seven faculty in the program called Human Factors and Applied Cognition and about 60 graduate students. And all of us are members of a lab called the ARCH Lab. Uh, the ARCH stands for the continuum from basic to applied research in cognition. So all of our faculty and students share an interest in theory-based application of cognitive psychology uh, to uh, real-world situations such as transportation, healthcare, military operations, uh, etc. Uh, the Arch Lab uh, is fairly unique, uh, in my experience, in departments of psychology. Uh, while we are all members of the same program and we have our separate uh, research areas, we all share our lab facilities. Uh, so, uh, for example, when I joined George Mason in 2004, I set up an EEG laboratory here, uh, but it's not mine own. I now uh, open it up and they have several f faculty colleagues who share that. The goal of the ARCH is to represent basic research on one side, applied research on the other. In an ideal world, those are connected. We don't have people doing work in the ac academy that is not related to what's happening in the real world, but we also hope that the real world is aware of the work that's being done in the university. In fact, the psychology department is interested in producing um, research that can be used by the world and we're also interested in being informed by the world in terms of what's interesting and important for research. So our lab is very much interested in staying connected to real world issues. So human factors is a study of human capabilities and also limitations and the role that they play in a performance in real world activities both at, at home, at transportation, and in industries such as transportation during driving, in pilots, air traffic controllers, military commanders. The central th uh, theme of human factors is that the design of systems in the real world can be enhanced through the consideration of such human capabilities and limitations. It's often the case that uh, systems are designed without taking such uh, human capabilities uh, into account only after the fact when there's some incidents or accidents or problems in using the system do they come to the light. So the goal of, of our program is to, f to extend theory and research in this area and to train students who, into using methods so that when they, for example, after they graduate, if they do not go into an academic position, if they go into a real industrial or government position, is to uh, spread the word and to give them tools to develop better systems uh, in, in all of these domains that I've talked about. Human factors in general looks at our limitations and our capabilities and tries to apply them to the design of objects that we use in order to either improve safety or productivity. Uh, so for example, if you think about our processing limitations, we don't see x-rays, we don't hear dog whistles, therefore a sign that is dark or a sound that is outside of our range of hearing cannot be used adequately as a warning or an alert. On the cognitive side, we're far more interested in how people comprehend complex information and what information people need to perform their jobs adequately. So the focus of my research has been in those areas on the cognitive side of our processing capacities and limitations.